Happy Friday, journalism students. Look at this. It's Friday, May 29th. You've got two more Fridays of high school for those of you who are seniors. The 29th and then the 5th. And then you're done with high school. Goes like that. But before you're done with high school, we've still got some stuff for our class. This is our last weekly issue telecast pre-production, which we talked about the other day. The virtual textbook lesson. We have already had one student who responded to this. If we go over here, we'll see, you can see Samantha's response. She was quick to respond immediately on Monday, excuse me, on, uh, on Wednesday, the first day um, that we had this. So her, here are her two responses. So when you respond so that others can see your uh, opinion on these and your perspective and kind of get an idea of what your thoughts are when it comes to this, as Samantha did, by the way, thank you, Samantha, for being first. Wasn't the first time she was first. Um, as you submit in a comment, make sure you also go over here and you submit assignment here. So while Samantha has already um, put her great responses in the comment section, we would still have to put it over here um, in order for the comments to go into the gradebook. So there's that. Then I also wanted to share another article that happened yesterday, and you may have seen this. The UC system has decided to drop the ACT and the SAT requirement for admission. And there should be a period there because it's not just for this crisis, it's going forward. Remember what we've learned about when we write articles. The first sentence, or excuse me, the first paragraph, the nut graph has to have the lead. The five W's, who, what, where, when, why, or, or how, depending on the situation. So look at the first, let me blow that up a little bit more. Look at the first sentence, which is the nut graph. In a decision that could reshape the nation's college admissions process, the University of California Regents voted Thursday to suspend SAT and ACT testing requirements through 2024 and then eliminate them for California students by 2025. So check that out. So who? The UC Regents. When? Thursday. What? Suspend. You got three of the five W's in one sentence. Not bad. Not bad. So I'm going to link this article so you can take a look at it. And I'll ask you, what do you think of this? What do you make of the UC's five-year plan to eliminate essentially the usage of the SAT and the ACT? If we look further down you will find an interesting statistic. Look at the vote. 51 to 0. Only one abstention, which means they didn't vote. And that could have been for any reason. They might not have even been there. But intriguingly, not one person who is part of the Senate Assembly, which is made up of the faculty leaders and the campus representatives at all of the UCs, Voted to keep it. Then, if we go down just a little more, we have their final, um, their, how they finalized the article. UC experts will launch a feasibility study. Feasibility study is one to figure out if it's viable, possible um, to do something, right? So they're going to launch a feasibility study this summer to identify a new test that assesses what the university expects students to master to demonstrate readiness for college. So they might come up with their own test, which is not too dissimilar to the test that you're already taking in 11th grade. Although this year they didn't take that test, it was waived. But you recall, those of you who are seniors, 
that we took a test when you're in your junior year, the state test, the SBAC. There is a feature in that that gives the Cal State system and the community college system your placement information. It may be that something like that is what will be worked into the state tests in 11th grade in order for students to demonstrate their capacity to show up at college. And instead of taking one test for the ACT, one for the ACT, and then one for the state in 11th, maybe it'll all be one, one exam. Who knows? They're launching the study this summer and they apparently have until 2025 to complete that study. So this isn't something that's going to affect students until 2025. And then that means it would probably implement it for 2026, which means that class of 2027, because in 2026, your the juniors would take it and they would be class of 2027. So that means that, let's see, we're class of 2020. So fifth graders today would be at some point taking this exam. Time flies, time flies. So let's do some shout outs to whoever liked last week's uh, or last uh, this week's update. We go from last Friday, no one liked anything, to this week, three. Thank you, Jasmine. Thank you, Samantha. Thank you, Iskali. And again, Samantha is the only one who's turned it in. Great job, Samantha. Thank you. And that's it for this Friday's update. I hope you're all well. I hope you stay safe. And keep this in mind. Let me zoom in dramatically. The second semester final documentary project. We have talked about this a lot in the updates. If you haven't caught up on them, please feel free to binge them. They're made with a lot of love and care. All right. See you next time.